You know, it's been a while since we've talked about the Buffalo Sabres, and it's been a while since we've talked about Jack Eichel. So, let's go over some of the more recently uncovered and confirmed details of the former second overall 2015 selection Jack Eichel's trade from Buffalo to Vegas, and what this means for the Buffalo Sabres heading into the long-term future. Now, if you're kind of new here, you need a little bit of an update to get up to speed. Jack Eichel was supposed to be a franchise game-changing superstar player for Buffalo, and for the most part, ever since he was drafted in 2015, he was kind of on the territory, the borderline of being just that. It's just the Buffalo Sabres, unfortunately, under Jack Eichel's captaincy, did not end up accomplishing all too much. They still finished last in the standings, or near last at the standings. They also never made the playoffs. Jack Eichel was very frustrated because he's a very competitive guy, and we've known this for a while, so it's not really all too much of a surprise to see him lash out in the way that he did. He inevitably got traded after what was a few months' worth of conversations going on about his surgery that the Buffalo Sabres management did not want him to get, and it was a really big, ugly mess. But eventually there was a trade that got made. A lot of people, myself included, kind of said that, hey, Jack Eichel is supposed to be a franchise-altering superstar, an 80-point guaranteed player every single year, with the potential of maybe even getting 90, 95, 100 maybe points even. And Buffalo ended up giving up Eichel with a conditional third-round pick to get a few players and a first and a second. Okay, while it's not the absolutely amazing, spectacular haul that a lot of people thought Eichel would be able to fetch, Sure, there were many elements that brought his value down in that respect. The very public trade negotiation process that was going on, the fact that he was super frustrated and he was so vocal in the media about how frustrated he was playing for a team that just did not win like the Buffalo Sabres. The surgery definitely added another layer of intricacy to the conversation as well. And so, ultimately, when Buffalo ended up receiving a package of what was Peyton Krebs, Alex Tuck, and a few picks... A lot of people were like, okay, it's not the best in the world, but we can live with it. This eventually became even more fun when you saw what Alex Tuck, a hometown guy, ended up doing for the Buffalo Sabres and the energy that he brought to this team. Sure, while he might not be an 80, 90 point caliber player, he still maxed out at 52 points in 74 games played as a member of the Golden Knights in 2018-19. He also had 38 points in 50 games for the regular Buffalo Sabres this season. Do the math over here of his pace with the team, 38 divided by 50 multiplied out by 82, and you have yourselves a pace that saw him get 60-ish points on the year over a full year, which is not bad in the slightest. You also saw the leadership, the mentorship, and just the overall energy that Alex Tuck brought to the locker room and to the fans. He was a guy that definitely wanted to be there in Buffalo, and you can feel that. You could thrive off that energy, and unfortunately for Jack Eichel, he didn't really have that same swagger to how he presented himself to the fans. As a result, Buffalo fans were in love with Alex Tuck immediately, and it was made even better when you acknowledge that Peyton Krebs was also getting sent over to Buffalo too. Peyton Krebs was a first-round pick by the Vegas Golden Knights in the 2019 draft, 17th overall. It's kind of funny because heading into that 2018-19 season, Peyton Krebs was seen alongside of guys like Dylan Cousins and Kirby Doc as a potential top 7-ish caliber pick. He ended up falling because of size concerns and the fact that he did have a few injuries that brought down his stock a little bit, but even though he had to hobble over on crutches to the draft stage, he still made it over and got drafted by Vegas. But, just like the rest of the Vegas Golden Knights prospects from earlier years, he ended up getting traded. Now, in the 48-game sample he had with the Sabres, he had 22 points. He was a minus 20, and he had 20 penalty minutes as well. Sure, it's not an incredible stat line for a guy that's just making his full-time NHL debut, but as a player who is only 21 years old, you definitely see there is a future with Peyton Krebs. He's got work ethic. He's got skill. He's got playmaking. He has a really good package of collective skills that, when combined, make for such an extraordinary high pace high-work ethic hockey player. We had a few goals earlier on in the season where Peyton Krebs was setting up guys like Alex Tuck with beautiful cross-seam passes that were no look on the backhand. It was incredible just to see how everything was working out. 
Plus the fact that Peyton Krabs also has a good energy to his game, and he definitely isn't that same type of personality that Eichel was, where you could definitely see, okay, Eichel is frustrated, he's pissed off, that kind of brings the mood down, I'm sorry. Like, obviously, I'm not in the room, right? I'm not in the locker room, I don't know what Jack Eichel is like off the ice, I don't know if he's a good dude or a bad dude or whatever, but we know that just from what we have seen, he's a very competitive dude, and that competitiveness really can influence the people around you, and for the most part, for Buffalo watching them towards the end of the 20, let's say 1920 ish era, it definitely was not as fun as it looks like now when you see. Don Granado doing what it is that he's doing, allowing the players to play their game. You have Tuck, you have Krebs, etc. But then you also have some other players that were drafted in the 2022 NHL draft that make this entire Jack Eichel departure feel a lot less painful. Let's go over to one of the first round picks that the Buffalo Sabres got from the Golden Knights. It was 16th overall in the 2022 draft. Now, there was a condition on this pick. If the pick was top 10, Vegas would instead transfer their 2023 first round pick to Buffalo. But because the Golden Knights finish just outside the playoff picture. They finish 16th overall in the draft rankings. That first round pick was sent over to the Buffalo Sabres, and with it, they selected a guy that I like a lot in this 16th overall spot, Noah Uslin, out of the Jurgarden system in the SHL. Now, Uslin did not produce with this team in the same way that fellow teammate Jonathan Lakaramaki did. He did not have the same sort of pizzazz as Liam Ugrin did. But what Noah Uslin does have is a very projectable two-way caliber game that I think definitely has a lot of, let's just say, guarantee towards making the pro level at some point. I do think that this guy is sort of like a discount Niels Hoaglander, and that's kind of interesting to say because Hoaglander was a second round pick back in 20, was it 2019? But when it comes to the stability on the boards, the eagerness to try some pretty nifty things, Noah Uslan has that tenfold, and this is a player that's already playing some pro hockey league games in Sweden. You also talk about the fact that Jurgardens was demoted to the Osvenskin because they finished poorly in the SHL season this year, which means that Noah Uslan heading into next season is going to be playing in the second tier pro men's league in that country. This is not the junior league. Also, this is not the top league. It's a nice little in-between medium where you have guys like Okaramaki, Uslan, and Ugrin all being able to suit up and play their games accordingly. It's going to be a good transition to see them go from the junior level to the second tier pro men's league level, especially when you consider that they were playing in the top league last year. This makes it so that the competition they're playing in the Allsvenskan is likely going to be a lot weaker, and you're hopefully going to see this team be able to bounce back and make the SHL for 2023-2024. That is, of course, if they win the division and get promoted, but that is a conversation we'll be having in about a year from now. You also have yourselves Buffalo's own first round pick in the 2022 draft, wherein they've selected a player that I'm actually super, super excited to see suit up with this team, Matthew Savoy. Now, there's another WHL Winnipeg Ice player in Savoy that has some chemistry with Peyton Krebs. He had played with him a little bit here and there. Obviously, they're three years apart, so they're not really too close in line together. But there is a chronicle here that links the two together when you talk about their WHL teams and just how good these players really were. Matthew Savoy went out there and absolutely produced like crazy for the Winnipeg Ice this season. 90 points in 65 games played after playing a season in the Dubuque Fighting Saints system in the USHL. Savoy is an absolutely crazy, dynamic, offensive, shifty player, and having this guy pan out to a potentially elite ceiling alongside a Krebs, Cousins, Tuck, Jack Quinn, and everybody else, it's going to be phenomenal seeing what the Buffalo Sabres are able to become in the next few years. I didn't even mention Isaac Roseanne, who you drafted last year, as well as the goaltenders you have, too. Devin Levi, he's knocking on the door, too. He's going to come in here in the next few years and probably take over in the crease. The Buffalo Sabres are on the upswing, baby, and it makes that Jack Eichel trade all the more easy to swallow, especially when you consider... Tuck, Krebs, and Uslin all coming back, you're still bad enough in the draft to get Matthew Savoy, and you have Dylan Cousins too. This team is looking to go on the upswing, and I can't wait to see it, baby. Talk to me in the comments all your thoughts about the Buffalo Sabres and their prospects, the guys they drafted recently, and where you think these players are going to go in the next few years. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.